Uh, it has been very volatile, so after a big slide yesterday, today the market is quiet but on the choppy side. S. Narain joins in uh, to give us his view on all of this. Um, Narain, hi, good afternoon. Uh, things have gotten slightly hi. tricky, uh, you know, in the last couple of weeks. Do you think it's just a year-end phenomenon where people would rather take their profits home uh, than worry what happens, you know, on their vacation? Or do you think that it, it, uh, the market has started, the trend of the market has started to turn a bit now? I think first it's got nothing to do with India. Uh, India is one of the biggest gainers in this entire uh, crude oil move. I mean, uh, the gain is like 25,000 crores a month because of this fall in crude oil. The problem is that while India gains 25,000 crores a month, it comes out of some other person or some other country. So, you know, one of the countries uh, which has certainly got hurt and must have lost I mean, on at current crude oil, the losses are pretty significant is Russia. And uh, there the interest rates went up and consequent to that, uh, we've had this sell-off. And, uh, you know, when India gains 25,000 crores a month, uh, it, there is a counterparty and uh, those counterparty losers are the reason for this rally. Thanks to the efforts of the Reserve Bank of India, we have such a huge increase in forex reserves at this point of time that Indian rupee is one of the most uh, well-behaved currencies against the dollar in the last one or two, three months. So I would say that India is suffering some collateral damage. Uh, we have seen falls due to Dubai, we have seen falls due to Ireland, Italy, Spain, Greece. And uh, we have seen that all these falls due to global reasons have all been opportunities to put money in Indian equities. And uh, again, you have one such opportunity. So I think and uh, the good, the disadvantage this year is normally we have these uh, panics between May and August each year, if you've seen the past. This year, the panic didn't happen in May and August, mainly because the election actually helped India to be the best performing country in the world, in the markets. And this time, the panic has come in December, unlike in May to August period. Naren, hi, afternoon. So, you know, for, from a long-time investor's point of view, what kind of sectors have now presented buying opportunity? Because, uh, you know, we had IT correct quite a bit, we had metals correct significantly, and off late we had financials also correct. Actually, the market itself has uh, represented an opportunity that includes IT, it includes... Uh, uh, metals, it includes banks, it includes telecoms. So I would say broadly the entire market has presented opportunity. And uh, I think uh, such opportunities come normally always in a year uh, and that's the beauty of the market. And if you are able to capitalize on those opportunities, it will be very good. Uh, just one point, if you take the very near term, see what happens is when an uh, when important commodity like crude oil cracks from 110 to 60, what happens is there are inventory losses and uh, some of those inventory losses will show up in the results for December when they show up in different companies. There is no logic to giving uh, a multiple to those losses because these losses are strictly one time. And uh, that definitely does hurt shorter term, uh, uh, I would say, earnings. And uh, if, in my opinion, people should invest for the long term now, but uh, they should not be surprised if the earnings surprise on the downside in Jan Feb, because such a big inventory drop, and this has happened in iron ore, it's happened in cotton, it's happened in uh, crude oil, obviously is going to lead to a situation where at least a few uh, companies are going to have huge inventory losses and uh, that should not be worrying. So I think that's why this is a beautiful opportunity for investing in the long term. One should make use of this opportunity and uh, you know and you might get such opportunities over the course of the next six months maybe because of the fact that you know such a big drop in crude oil is going to affect a lot of economies on the negative india will get affected in the positive but that will take time to play out so you're going to get a beautiful buying opportunity today and over the next six to nine months and i think investors are sufficiently under invested in equity in india that this nine month uh, window is a beautiful opportunity to again increase their weightages 
Okay, that's a, that's an interesting observation. So, you know, if I just th slice through sectors, uh, take the four heavyweights from different sectors, Reliance, Infosys, LNT, Bharti, across the board, uh, these stocks have fallen 10% um, this month itself. Are you suggesting that, uh, you know, you should just go out there and buy good quality names across sectors or um, is it case by case now? Yeah, as we will always tell you, you pick uh, good funds belonging to our stable to consider investing rather than individual stocks. But uh, otherwise, I would say there has been a good correction in many good fundamental stocks. Many of them have become much more attractive than they were uh, a month or two back. And uh, these are all interesting opportunities. Uh, as I said, you have to invest with a longer term view. If you're going to be a trader, uh, every day I think now you'll be watching Russian ruble just like we used to watch Euro in 2012. But uh, you know mutual funds are vehicles for investment and uh, for us it's a beautiful opportunity to look at investing with a long term view because we are not focused on what happens to ruble in the next three hours or what happens tomorrow. But I think these are different, difficult times for traders and uh, very good times for long term investors. Okay, uh, Naren, uh, one sector which is uh, clearly under pressure is uh, the, the oil and gas sector and it's a bit of a double whammy because A, what, what, what's happening to crude, you don't know how that dynamic is going to shape out and B, you don't know yet uh, what the government policy is going to be because, uh, you know, clearly OMCs are not being take, you know, given advantage of uh, falling prices in terms of any kind of big positive margin and on the upstream side, we don't know how much of uh, subsidy burden they'll have to share. So we've seen quite a bit of correction in stocks through, across the oil and gas space. Uh, would you be invested here or uh, uh, would you rather stay out? No, we would. But uh, you, know, uh, you know the only point as I mentioned, if you see where the inventory losses are going to get concentrated, is going to be in this sector. So one should invest but keep in mind that you know, you have to invest for the long term. I think if crude is going to sustain at one level, it is much easier for the government to come up with policy. We actually uh, were very pleasantly surprised by the increase in excise duties on both petrol and diesel. I think they were very necessary because uh, end of the day, the fiscal deficit has to improve and when crude oil comes, you have to increase these excise duties so that the excise duty collection improves. So I think overall the policy is under formulation and uh, is it, would anyone have judged that in the last uh, one week this kind of fall will happen and we'll be worried about crude going down in the world rather than crude going up. So I think it's not easy to formulate policies uh, in this kind of volatile market. But I think on the whole if you see, I think over a period of time India will be the biggest gainer of this crude oil reset and we'll get that benefit in the long run. If people expect you will get that benefit in the next one or two months, they may get disappointed. But I think as long for long-term investors, this is a beautiful opportunity. Okay. And then one final question then from my end. Uh, currency has again come back to haunt uh, a lot of investors. Uh, uh, you know, the, the way rupee has fallen. It was resilient in the, in the first half of dollar strength, but now it's quite clearly uh, become a bit wobbly. Uh, do you think that's an area of concern or uh, is that something that you should just take on in your stride and move on? So when people ask me what are the what is the problem, I tell them dollar is the greatest currency in the world today. But uh, Indian rupee is a great currency. If you compare Indian rupee against uh, yen, against Brazilian rial, against uh, Indonesian rupiah, against Russian ruble, you will find that India is a great currency. It is just that US dollar is the greatest currency. So you are comparing a great currency against a currency and the level of uh, reserves that today Reserve Bank has it's a job very very easy compared to most other countries in the world. So I think currency is not a problem but you have to recognize that dollar is the greatest currency at this point of time. So that is uh, there but I think currency is hardly a big problem at this point of time. The only issue in my opinion from an equity market point of view is that growth has not picked up. And uh, it doesn't look uh, with this kind of uh, fall in commodity prices, growth can pick up in the near term. I'm not worried about uh, currency, I'm not worried about the volatility in the equity market. 
I do believe that uh, this kind of a trend in global commodity prices means that our recovery can get delayed a bit. But again, that doesn't affect a long-term investor. It only affects a trader. So I think from an investor point of view, it's a very good period. From a trader point of view, I think people have to look very closely at all the data because it's not an easy period for a trader, but a very good period for long-term investors. All right. Uh, on that optimistic note, we hope our uh, viewers and investors keep the faith as you are suggesting. Yes, Narain, thanks as always for joining us.